Guess what, Lions? For as little as $5 a month, you can get access to exclusive bonus audio content and help this program grow by joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. To learn more, head over to lionsofliberty.com slash support. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land here on the Lions of Liberty podcast, your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and Liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. Oh boy. Hey everybody, what is shaking out there, my Liberty friends? I wish you all were little Liberty masseuses that could come over and tend to my tender back right now. I am doing a very truncated podcast today, guys, because I have been laid out, as our Pride members know, <laughs> We did our uh, our annual Pride call with our twenty five dollar members, where we talk one on one with our wonderful listeners. And uh, I was laid out in the bed. I had to do it on my back, so I'm sitting up right now, but maybe not for long. I had uh, thrown my back out this whole week, having muscle spasms like a motherfucker, and uh, finally got some good meds. Some of them good meds. So <laughs> keeping this a little shorter. So guys, this is Electric Liberty Land episode forty three. Which, of course, means you can find it at lionsofliberty.com forward slash ELL43. And uh, I'm just going to hit on a couple of quick topics. I will make up the uh, the difference in time, though. I'll either do an extra long episode next week when I'm feeling a little more up to it. Or if the meds really kick in nice, maybe I'll record some sort of content later in the week to air over the weekend or uh, or just pop something else in randomly. It'll be a nice surprise for you guys. You'll... You'll be like children on Christmas morning, except maybe both your parents will be there this time. All right, so let's get into this. First things first, there is a court hearing right now ongoing in California. It's a federal court in California, and they are listening to arguments challenging California's criminalization of prostitution. Now, as you know, most states have outlawed prostitution and frankly, it's complete bullshit. Uh, any thinking person that's not just a complete religious zealot that thinks that this has some sort of moral wrongness to it would be in full support of a full legalization of prostitution. Not just because you own your body and should be able to do whatever the hell you want to do with your body when it comes to consenting contact with somebody else. Whether or not there is money involved in that has nothing to do with the federal government. And uh, so basically, this is going to be rambling, by the way, because I'm already on these meds. But basically, so the Erotic Service Providers Legal Education and Research Project, uh, that's who brought this lawsuit forward, is claiming that it violates residents' right to privacy, free speech, and free association. And again, just from what I just said, they're dead on. You own your body. You, uh, you have the right to associate with whoever you damn well want. And you have a right to privacy. I mean, you're not going to be banging people in the middle of the street. You're going to go to the hotel room. And what's happening now, of course, is that these cops are busting in. They're they're going into private establishments. They're following people around. They're banning people from posting on social websites and uh, and you know backpages.com and Craigslist. And the thing is, it's so incredibly counterproductive because when you actually put the pieces together and look at the results, prostitution in general has become so much safer for escorts and for uh, ladies and gentlemen of the evening since the advent of the internet and since sites like Craigslist and Backpages came along. So when you see these legislators grandstand and get up on their soapbox and say, well, we have to stop this because it's for the safety of these women and it's to stop sex trafficking, that's all complete hogwash. Because while sex trafficking exists, that is typically held in the shadows. You're not going and advertising that you have an underage prostitute that you got strung out on heroin or that was a foster child that you found and you've coddled and you've run into your side and gotten to trust you so you could whore them out. You're not going to put that on Craigslist. You're not going to go post it on back pages. That has to be kept in the shadows. And there is literally no law you can pass that's going to stop that kind of thing from happening. There is no law to stop criminals and people that have absolute uh, just souls that are filthy, covered in guts and grime from t- taking advantage of other people. 
That's a part of society. Part of society is evil. Part of people are evil, and they're willing to get ahead and exploit others to do it. But by taking away people's legal ability to sell their own property, which is their body, and as one argument in this puts it, puts forth, uh, to say that you can't charge money for something that you can legally just give away for free is ridiculous. And by keeping it legal, you give people the access to these services to have online websites, to have businesses where they can pay to have protection, where they can have, you can have a hotel as they do in Mexico, as they do in Asia, as they do in all these other places that have already legalized prostitution. Germany. <laughs> all right, by the way, so I, I was going off on a tangent. Uh, and I, actually, I want to go off on a quick tangent. And I will so right after this. Let me finish this point up, then I'm going to go on this funny story. But so anyway, you, you give these people protection. You assure that they're going to be out in the daylight. You can even, if you want to pass any sort of regulation, you can pass a regulation that requires they be tested. Meanwhile, the market would take care of that on their own because pretty much no one's going to go to an establishment that doesn't already test their sex workers because you go once and you come back with the fucking syphilis or the super syphilis, which exists now. You ain't going back there. And you're probably going to tell everybody, you know, I mean, hey, <laughs> you talk about a nasty Yelp review. Oh, my friend, that is going to be one sour Yelp review. I went to this establishment. I heard great things. I left with my dick dripping. Mm, that is a killer. That's worse than that Amy's Bakery episode of uh, Kitchen Nightmares, which is a fantastic one. Highly recommend it. So side tangent. <laughs> I just say, you know, Germany obviously has legal prostitution there. Uh, one night I was drinking outside of my favorite establishment, the Sports Harbor Bar, which you probably heard me talk about. Nice little dive bar here in the Los Angeles region. And uh, and home to my six and one kings of the NFL right now, Philadelphia Eagles. Go Birds! Anybody that's a Dallas Cowboy fan listening can suck a dick. Redskins also suck a dick. And the Giants can suck a dick. But moving ahead. So I'm chilling outside of that bar, and I think I was smoking a cigarette. I bummed a cigarette from a German. There's like a couple of German hostel uh, guys that were there that were touring around. And the guy goes, I don't get that. He goes, I just, you know, I go to the strip club uh, up the streets, and I go in, and the girls are beautiful, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I'm having a wonderful time. As this girl comes up to me, and she says, uh, you know, you want to go to the back room. So I say, sure, yes, I go to the back room with her, and I expect that she is going to uh, do something more. But... Uh, then she says, oh, no, no, uh, we can't do that here. We have to go to another back room. And so I say, oh, yeah, okay, okay we can go to a, another back room. And so I go in that back room, and then she's like, oh, that's a, you know, $300. So I give her the money, and then I still don't get to fuck her. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because in Germany, it's like a 50 Deutschmark, and you fuck them. And they're hotter than these girls. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, God damn, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You're right. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a pretty fucked system we got here. But you look at that though. It's at clear, Germany, very very progressive nation now. Germany, which is which has moved so far forward in solar. Germany, which is so it's moved to ridiculous uh, places with its laws on what you can and can't say and uh, and hate laws and all this other bullshit. Germany, which is which is now counts itself as so ultra ultra progressive. They seem to be completely fine with legalized prostitution because it is really it, these other the other idiotic arguments people make other than the safety thing is they say that it's exploitation of women. Never mind that it's also men. So there's also men involved in this, you sexist dickheads. But is there no better use? Well, there's plenty of better use. That this, I'm not even going to finish that comment. If you want to use your body as a beautiful woman to get ahead, there's many ways to do it. As we saw with Harvey Weinstein. A lot of those women were very, very complicit in what they were doing. They knew this was a trade, quid pro quo. I am going to provide this service to you, uh, fat, horny guy. You are going to provide me with a career. We're both fine with that. Great. Now, if you're a prostitute and you want to provide your body to somebody for $400 or whatever the going rate for a prostitute is these days, they, they should be more than uh, welcome to do that as well. It's not exploitive if the person is exploiting themselves. One cannot exploit oneself. And you know what? If you're turning, let's say they turn six tricks a night at a rate of $500 a piece, you're making three grand a night. That's pretty goddamn good money. So 
How is that exploitative exactly? If anything, the people that are paying this $600 or $500 a night are being exploited because they're horny and they're lonely or their marriages are not getting laid or they just want to fuck somebody else. I don't know. I'm sure there's a million reasons. And they are being taken advantage of by these, these, uh, these women who are now sexual predators for money. That's what they should have done with the Predator remake. It should have been about sexual predators for money. Space sexual predators with crab insect faces for money. If anybody out there is listening, any from the Talesian Nexus or the Talison Nexus, there you go. That's my pitch. And Adam Choi, if you're listening, I'm going to read your uh, your spec you, uh, you sent me. I just went too much pain and hopped up on drugs. <laughs> there you go. It was a personal shout out to you. So anyway, it's, this is encouraging to see. And I, I, you know, I still can't see this moving forward, but I really hope it does. I really hope that they legalize prostitution in California. It's got a lot of civil rights, public health, LGBTQ groups have filed briefs in support of this, which is banned. Fucking tastic. The ACLU is also behind it. The Women California Women's Law Center, uh, anti-sex trafficking group, the Children of the Night. These, these are people you'd expect to be against it. But they're supporting it because when you bring it out in the open, you can control it better as an industry. Now, I'm not talking about government control. I'm talking about the market can control itself better. Everybody's safer. Everybody wins. Everybody makes money. It's just a no-brainer unless you're some dumb fuck asshole who wants to get on a soapbox and say that it's immoral or exploitative or it's bad for women. It's just I can't say enough how much this kind of legislation has to be passed, not just in California, but across the entire country as a whole. And do it ASA fucking P. And a little addendum to that. Let's not forget that also, if you're out of work and you need to make some cash quick, how about instead of going to the welfare office or going to the disability office or going to the unemployment office, you just decide that you're going to go to turn tricks a few times. You can make your rent in about two days. So that's pretty attractive. You might not be attractive. You might have to lower your prices. Maybe it'll take you an extra day. But still, talk about raising employment rates, people. That'll definitely do it. Okay, next topic I want to turn to is in the realm of the absolutely ridiculous. I won't spend too long on this, but I do think it's uh, it's worth mentioning. Is that the newest thing, and this is written in Newsweek, so it's not a joke. It's not some crazy, uh, you know, mocking thing or, uh, that's you know, from the Media Research Center or something. This is actual, actual story. And I'm not saying Newsweek, by the way, is uh, is never fake news either. Don't get me wrong. But they're reporting that progressive ass clowns are now gathering their strength for November 11th, the date of Trump's election anniversary, to go into the street, stare up at the sky, and scream at the sky. Just, <laughs> they're just going to go because they feel like they can't do anything else, so they have to scream at the sky. They're going to scream helplessly. Ah! Which I'm just, I'm, I'm just hoping. I, you know, if this happens, I'm gonna go out into the street and I'm just gonna scream. I'm a fucking progressive fucking idiot. Somebody put me out of my progressive fuckhead misery. Because that's about the only thing those people should be screaming, or begging God to strike them down so that they cannot poison the human race with any of their stupidity. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Are they going to use full knit pussy suits, by the way, in this? Like, how do you step your game up from the pussy hat rally? Just full wrap around. They'll have a nice big vagina lips up the middle. Uh, You know, they can maybe they'll have a big Trump dick that'll fly around fucking each one of them to make a double point as they're screaming into the sky. I mean, God, talk about the stupidest. Fucking most pointless, pointless, idiotic crybaby. I mean, this is literally, this is having a temper tantrum. They're like, we want everybody en masse to go into the street and have a temper tantrum like a bunch of babies. That's what this is. That's what all of this has culminated in. These people having a goddamn temper tantrum in the middle of the street and yelling at the sky. Would somebody think about the birds? Scaring all the birds. 
All right, last thing I'm going to talk about, and that is it for this episode. Uh, I've got many more topics to cover, but as I said, I'll, I'll either cover them next episode or I will do bonus content for that. Um, bonus content for everybody, I should say, not just for our Pride members, as we so often do. Okay, so last thing. Washington Times is reporting that the Pentagon says the country should stick with mandatory registration for a military draft. Boo earns to that. But they also are advocating a requirement for women to sign up for the first time in United States history. Which is interesting. Obviously, I'm very much against that as I'm against any sort of draft. But what I'm curious to see is how quickly the feminist shit is going to hit the fan on this one. Because, you know what, it comes it really comes down. You can talk a big game when you're when you're uh, one of these crazy feminists that are that are out there. Uh, saying how men are, are terrible and uh, and the, the patriarchy is ruining everyone's lives and and forgetting the fact that men do so many of the dangerous jobs that women don't want to do or are physically unable to do in some circumstances. You know, all the, the dangerous jobs, the military, obviously women can sign up right now, but certain jobs like a lot of the firefighting, a lot of the construction work, a lot of high tree cutting down work, a lot of electric work where you're climbing up these high poles, construction work where you're all these, you know, on these high girders, all these dangerous jobs typically men do. Oil rigs, you know, doing oil rig stuff. So, but meanwhile, women could do them, but they're not forced to do them. So it's, I'm really curious to see how this works out. If I want to see how many feminist organizations are going to come out and say, yes, finally, thank, thank you government for hearing our prayers and finally making women sign up to be eligible for the draft. Or are they going to retreat or find some other horseshit little way to weasel around it and say that it's still not fair and it's somehow still a tool of the patriarchy to uh, to to make women subservient? That's my guess. As a PR pro, that is what I am assuring you what is going to happen. That's how it's going to go down. They're going to try to spin this so that they still don't have to support women getting drafted. They're still going to fight against it tooth and nail, despite the fact that it's insanely hypocritical to do so. They're going to fight it tooth and nail be using some crazy straw man argument. Something like that the patriarchy is only drafting women so that they can be subservient to the men in battle uh, and that they they are objecting to it because women would be uh, at far greater risk of sexual assault. That's probably what it's going to be. Sexual assault is what they're going to they're going to fight back and say no, we shouldn't have a mandatory draft because women abroad would be uh, raped. Something like that. Just just you wait. Uh, I'm I'm making that call. Wait and see, because this is going to be fun to watch if they actually try to do it. And under Trump, I would not be shocked if they actually did try to do it. All right, there you go, guys. That's it. It's extra short today. As I said, I'm going to go back and lie down on the floor. I'm going to pop some more Tramadone or something like that that they gave me and a Flexerol, and I'm going to just melt into the floor, hopefully, and tomorrow... God willing. God who I don't believe in. Willing. I will feel better. All right, guys. Peace out. From me, Brian McWilliams, from the Lions of Liberty, I wish you a very fantastic day. From Electric Liberty Land, always stay plugged in.